Hey everybody, it's Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 14, or more specifically part 3 in what's going to end up being a four-part series on converting a Photoshop mock-up into a CSS website. So where were we before? Let's open it up right in the browser. This is where we were before. We actually were doing pretty good here. We're, you know, getting close to done. We have... Uh, three state menu. You can see two of the states here as I roll over them. Uh, uh, tabs and they're down and roll over states. We have our header up here, footer down here, a bunch of main content here. So we're doing a pretty good job. We're going to take part three to to clean up this main content area and then just go back and clean up some of the code and do a, a few more smarter things with it. So let's take a look at Photoshop too so we can see where we're coming from. Uh, before these these were off, this is what we were building, but here's here's what the main content area kind of looks like, a mini version of what CSS Tricks looks like with a, a big uh, title area up here, like the titles of the posts on CSS Tricks, and then some metadata about those posts, you know, buy me on this date with comments, and then some content with links look like this, and then a sidebar when we just have an ad over here. So what we're going to need to do is make a left column and a right column, get some typography going on in here and then I'll finish up with a few tricks uh, and, and changes I would make to the code. So let's get started. Alright, I have the index file and a separate CSS file opened up here in TextMate. Uh, here's the CSS file. I can scroll through it real quick. I'm not going to go into anything specific. You've already seen it in parts 1 and 2. Uh, and here's the index file. I can scroll through that slowly for you too. Not much to look at, very simple and semantic markup. Try to keep things as clean as possible. Here is that big chunk of lorem ipsum text that we plunked in there uh, to watch that main content area grow. Let's code the markup for this. Uh, and not just this lorem ipsum text, we'll leave that there, but what we need is a post title. So maybe we'll use an H1, arguably the most important title on the page is the first article that people see. So we'll just give it a post title of some kind. And then we'll give it that metadata. You remember that stuff we just looked at in there that was, let's say, by me on March 15th. What's the real day? Let's just, it's not March 15th anymore. It's April 17th today. And 2008. And then uh, stuff like this would probably come in dynamically from WordPress. That's how it works in, in on CSS Tricks for Real. But we can just fake it for here and put seven comments, something like that. And, and the B, and we'll make that a fake link so we can see what links look like in this area. But this paragraph is going to be treated differently than this paragraph because this is the metadata and this is, uh, you know, basically there's that yellow box around it is what I'm getting at. This this yellow box in Photoshop, we're trying to replicate that look. That's what we're doing here. So let's give it a unique class so that we can deal with it uniquely. Class equals metadata. Okay, pretty good start there. Um, all this, this header, this metadata, and this big chunk of text here is going to be in the left column, or uh, sometimes I don't like to use the word left when, when class names, because what if someday I want to change this left column to the right column and I want my sidebar to be the left column? Um, it's better to not use things like left and right in case someday I want to switch those around. So let's call it something else. Div... Oh, I can't think of anything smart. Let's call it article area. And and make sure to close that div. And we'll indent that stuff that's inside the article area. Let's just keep it clean here. And then a good name for the sidebar is... Sidebar? We already have a sidebar. What am I doing? Hmm. I'm trying to see where div and our, we're going to need that sidebar to be within our main content area. So that's nice. 
anyway, that's a good markup for that. Let's put something in that sidebar area so it's not all empty over there and we can see what's going on. Uh, and it's an image, so why don't we just, well, let's just cut it out quick. No harm done. Let's get rid of our guides because they're kind of cutting through there with command semicolon gets rid of the guides. And we'll do a little trick while we're here. Just grab the crop tool and and grab anywhere around it. You don't have to be too specific about where because I'll show you. You can just go to image, trim, and trim based on the top left pixel, which is white. So it'll trim everything that's kind of white away from the area. You kind of see, see it just sucks down into just the image itself. It's a really nice way to get a really tight crop on something instead of having to eyeball it or draw guides or whatever. So that's a decent little trick we'll save it out oh you see we still got slices clear the slices before you save for web so that they don't interfere and we'll make it a ping whatever looks good to you you know you can peruse and we'll call it add and we'll save it directly into our images folder and as always we'll back up to before we did any cropping before we move away so we don't save over anything and then we'll I just wanted to have some we went through that whole thing so I could get some content over here in the sidebar images add ping always do alt text so your code validates it not only helps it validate but if that image doesn't show up for some reason this will be the text that shows up in its stead <clears throat> And we'll save it. I suppose we could go just look at what we did, even though we don't really have any styling set up for H1s and P-class metadata and sidebar and stuff yet, but we might as well just see what we did. So here's this area that we set up. That's the left column, and this is the right column. It doesn't know what to do with left and right. We haven't told it to float or do anything special yet, so, so it's just stacking them on top of each other, which is expected. But it doesn't look too bad. But let's jump into some typography and get that going. Okay, so we need to make some typographic choices here. And here we're back in Photoshop. And this stuff here was just some, some stuff that I just screenshotted off CSS Tricks. So unfortunately, I can't really select this text here and see what font it was in Photoshop. But I did steal it right from CSS Tricks. So let's, let's see if we can go over and decipher directly from CSS Tricks what font that's been using there. Um, I'm using Firefox here because there's this cool Firebug extension, which uh, we could probably do 10 podcasts just on Firebug because it's really quite cool. But I won't do that now. I'm just going to pop it open and use it to hit Inspect and then click on this. And it will show me all kinds of the CSS styles that are affecting the thing that I have clicked on. And you can see that this is a this is H2, and my H2s are Georgia. So I've just that that font is Georgia. I know it's Georgia. Pretty slick way to kind of you know, hey, that's a cool font. Let me pop open Firebug and see what it is, and see what what settings they are using there. So, and then let's get the font for this while we're in here too. And that's probably set at a pretty high level here it is lucidia grand so we know what our two fonts are so when we go back to our css we can reference them as such let's get whisk firefox away there and get back into textmate and open our styles um what's a good place we'll just put it anywhere here h1 is going to use the font family georgia Georgia is a serif font, and it's always a good idea to end your string of font family declarations with the most basic of, of the font family's serif. So if for some possible reason, or if you spelled it wrong like I did here, Georgia, it will default to whatever that computer has for a default serif font. Most, if not all, computers have Georgia, but it's just good practice to end your font family declaration, declarations that way. And it was pretty big. It was three M's. Uh, so I don't know if you know about this. We'll just we'll, we won't spend too much time on it. But if you set your font to 62.5 percent in your body, that means that for each 1.0 M is 10 pixels. So like 1.2 M is 12 pixels. So 
and on CSS tricks, it's 3.0 M 30 pixels, really big text the, we're kind of working on this miniaturized version of CSS tricks. So let's set the font size to something a little more normal and manageable like that. And a color, let's pick that. Let's use our color dabber here and try to get on somewhere where we can, um, why isn't that working? steal that sandy color let's just pop open our color picker and get one ourselves dang it it's kind of yellowy and orangey and whatever we don't need to be too specific and we'll copy that hex code out jump back to textmate and say that our color is that and save it and go and let's look in safari what we did and not bad <laughs> there's a few things we missed there it's still bold and the, it happens to be that that version of georgia that we are shooting for isn't bold and it's a little small so let's bump up that size significantly and we'll say that the font weight h1s and all most header tags i think I'm all of them maybe h1 through h6 they default to font weight bold so if you don't want them to be bold Font weight normal, which is a hip thing to do these days, I decided. So there we go. That's a lot closer to that header style. Uh, there's a lot more stuff you can do with web typography. We could space out those letters. We could, you know, give it its own background color and stuff like that. But that's a nice, simple, and clean look, so let's leave it at that. Then we need to deal with that metadata thing. So P our paragraphs with a class of metadata as a background color let's just call it say background and I bet well, we should be able to snag that yellow color with the eyedropper tool and then copy it there's a lot of this jumping back and forth kind of thing going on when you're developing a site it's very normal background and it's got a little padding to it something like three pixels and that might be all there is to it. Let's jump to Safari again and reload. Yeah, not bad. That's the uh, that light yellow color and the padding just adds a nice little kind of visual rule, visual breakup for this metadata type of stuff before the main content starts. So the other thing we figured out was that it was we weren't using Helvetica in general on the site where we were. It was um, Lucidia Grand which is a serif sort of kind of, or a sand, no, I'm sorry, it's a sand serif sort of kind of. It's kind of a tweener though almost, isn't it? <clears throat> no, that's pretty serif, <laughs> sand serif rather. Okay, good enough. Let's take care of those columns quick um, as part of our structure. We'll put it within the main content area. Uh, what do we call it? Article area not the most clever thing in the world but and we need to know how wide we want that to be in OSX to get the handy dandy little uh, command shift 4 to give you those uh, the little screenshot hairs which are really cool in leopard because they they have dimensions you can see right right when I stop there it says 347 width by 3 height it's a quickie little way to just get dimensions of a just loose if you don't want to be too specific looks like 425 would work for us for the width of that area and then you can just hit escape to not actually take a screenshot width 425 pixels float left then the sidebar we will float to the right and what kind of width does that have? Should we just guess again? You you know, there's ways to be more specific about this, but we're just we're just screwing around. You know what? Oh, it's an even better way than just guessing here. Let's just look up the width of the exact the exact width of that um, the ad that we chomped out. So we saved it in images here. We can just get info on it. You see me doing this a lot, right? Uh, and it's 92 wide. So let's just make our sidebar 92 wide. 92 pixels okay and what's gonna be interesting here is that when you have 
two th- uh, something floated left and something th- floated right in a box. The height gets wonky. You'll see what I mean. I'm pretty sure this is going to screw this whole thing up. Yeah, you see what happened is is it's just not calculating the height of this area properly anymore of this main content area. So it just collapsed it down to zero. Because for some reason, floated elements don't have heights. That's where this whole concept of clearing floats comes in. Is if we clear the float after the left and right sidebar, then it's just like it's like inserting this little thing that all of a sudden now it knows what's up and now can calculate the height properly. So clearing floats is just one of those hassly stupid things, but you got to do it. So you can see in my little toolbox here, I already have a class that I use for clearing floats. There's tons of ways to clear floats, or maybe not tons, but this is a debated topic and and really semantic people might get after me for this, but this is how I clear floats and dang it, it works. So screw it. Div class clear. It's empty div. It doesn't have anything inside it. That's why this is controversial. This doesn't have anything to do with the content of the site. It's purely for layout only, so it is technically not semantic, but it will clear that float and it will fix this website. So here we go. Oh, that's the right browser. Safari, reload, and you see now that float is cleared and piece is restored to the website. Sweet. So there you go. There's a two the two column site. That's about as far as I wanted to get with the uh, finishing out the the conversion of the site. Uh, I'm gonna spend a few minutes cleaning up some things to show you. So we'll do that quick, and then uh, I'll tell you what number four is gonna be all about. Okay, so there's a couple things that I wanted to fix, and they're both kind of related, so we're just going to do them both at the same time. One of them was that little shadow area thing that we are seeing on the live website that that wasn't connecting this tag right and looking weird. That came from, like, if we're in Photoshop here and I just, let's get rid of, well, let's keep the guides, and I'll <clears throat> grab my crop tool and crop out just this area. You can see that little shadow right there. It came from some layer style somewhere some shape had some inner glow on it or something that now that this is cropped is like reapplying that inner glow to the new cropped shape anyway it doesn't even matter where it came from because the w- the way that we're going to fix it is just to not worry about little discrepancies like that let's back up a step and before we crop it let's just flatten the whole thing so we don't have any layer styles to worry about anymore uh, this went off the screen here, but at the at the bottom of the layers menu is flatten image, discard hidden layers, sure, and that will prevent any anything changing when I crop it. I could crop any part of this thing now, and it will it will you know layer styles won't reapply themselves and do any weird stuff. Now, if we look at the bottom of the that shadow is gone, and we can save ourselves clear slices, save ourselves back out as the header save over what we had and we won't have to worry about that I just did it so <clears throat> it's already gone but that's where that weird thing was and now it's gone so let's jump back to TextMate though and see how we right here how we inserted that header on the page was just dropping an image in there which is fine it did the trick or it looks right But it's such an important part of a website that if we were to turn CSS off or turn images and off, that thing's just gone. And and if we, you know, if we turn up images off, it'll say mock-up header. We could put, you know, our super website up here, and then at least we'd get that as the header. But you know, for with CSS off, your page should really it should look strong. It should still have a page identity at the top and stuff like that. So. Um, That's where this issue of CSS image replacement comes in. This is a perfect example for it. So let's just do it here. Instead of an image, let's give this thing a proper header tag, another H1, and we'll call it class is logo. And right up there, we'll say our super website slash and and close our header tag. So now with with even if you were to turn images and CSS off completely, the browser default would still render a big our nice our super website up there and still give it a strong site identity. But then how do we turn this h1 tag with text into just our logo when CSS is on? Well, let's save this and then go into style and declare a special thing for that. 
Oops. H1, and do we use an ID or a class? Probably an ID would make the most sense since that there will ever only be one on the page. H2 with an ID of logo. And there's a few things we need to do here. It's very, it's not that complicated, but let's make sure we get the dimensions right. 654 by 112. So width, 654 pixels, height, 112 pixels. <clears throat> And each elements are automatically blocks. We don't have to like switch it to block or anything like that in its display value. But we need, need to apply that graphic because that's gone now. So images slash header dot JPEG. <clears throat> and for good measure, we'll just say don't repeat it. And make sure it's right in the middle of that block. Kind of unnecessary, but just for good measure, like I say. Th what this would do, though, is there'd be that block and there'd be that background image, but that text would still be sitting right on top of it. So let's kick that text off the page with a negative text indent, which is just a nice kind of simple cross-browser way to do it and save it. So, and then let's jump back to Safari and really nothing should change whatsoever. It looks exactly the same, but it's just a little smarter way of doing it. Now this image up here, instead of it being an image, is just an H1 tag with uh, its background image replaced. So pretty smart, and that pretty much concludes the conversion of this Photoshop document into an HTML and CSS website. Thanks. Couple things I wanna show you on the web again. As I'm excited to, that we I have PSD to HTML as a sponsor, especially for this series, because they do exactly what we do here, which is, you know, you send them a Photoshop file and they send you back uh, markup, CSS and HTML, your design, lovingly, well craftedly turned into HTML and CSS. They do a great job. I've said before, I've used them myself. They, the, the code was absolutely up to my standards and they did a good job and they do it fast. They do it within eight hours and their prices are super reasonable. If you just had a single page, if you sent them the, if I sent them the Photoshop file that we're working on right now, it would, you know, I, I bet it wouldn't even take them eight hours. It would take them much less than that. So, and the prices are super reasonable i think well let's look at the if we go to the order now page and look for a single page table list works in ie firefox opera safari 153 bucks so <laughs> you could almost make money using their service if, if somebody approached you with a photoshop file and needed you to to turn it into a, a html and css and 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 you know you were busy with other stuff you could just send it to them they'll send it back to you and you could charge 250 bucks and call it a day, huh? So PSD to HTML, one of our sponsors, and a very nice service. As always, you can go to cssstricks.com for more tips and tricks throughout the week and more content. You know, I only do one of these podcasts a week, but there's pretty much a new post of some sort or another every day or every other day or so on CSS Tricks. So more stuff there. One thing of note this week is we finally have a decent archive section. So I'm working on getting a nice button for this somewhere, but but you can always go to CSS Tricks, css-tricks.com slash archives. And now instead of having to browse through four posts at a time or know what month it was or anything, we just have this huge headline list that you can that you can sort through if you're like need to just browse quickly. You know, if it's an old post that you were looking for, or if it's, uh, you know, you just want to browse to read something interesting, and it's paginated here, so it's just a lot easier to browse the archives now, so nice little upgrade for us there. So, until next time, see you later, bye.